Once war was declared, conformity, patriotism, and complete support for the war were demanded of all Americans. Freedom of speech and thought was becoming unacceptable. Different language and culture, suspicious. German Americans in particular were scrutinized and their loyalty questioned. Schools dropped German from their language classes. German books were withdrawn from public libraries. German measles was renamed Liberty Measles and sauerkraut Liberty Cabbage. Frederick Stock, the distinguished conductor of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, was not allowed to conduct, and many other orchestras refused to play the music of Bach and Beethoven. Soon, these sentiments manifested into anti-German violence. The most notorious case occurred in Collinsville, Illinois, when German-born Robert Prager was lynched. Intolerance spread beyond German Americans. William Harding, then governor of Iowa, made a brash proclamation. Conversation in public places, on trains, or over the telephone should be in the English language. People who spoke Dutch, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, and Czech, on top of those who spoke German, were affected. Elderly women were jailed for speaking German over the telephone. A Lutheran pastor was imprisoned for preaching part of a funeral service for a soldier killed in the war in Swedish. His explanation that he did it because the young man's grandparents couldn't speak English did not sway the judge. Governor Harding even maintained that God did not hear prayers that were spoken in any language other than English. In June of 1917, Congress passed and President Wilson signed the Espionage Act and 11 months later, the Sedition Act. Under these laws, a person could be fined as much as $10,000 and could be sentenced to as many as 20 years in prison for anti-war activities, like interfering with the draft or with the sale of government bonds. Imprisonment could result from saying anything disloyal, profane, or abusive concerning the war effort. Despite the fact that these two acts violated the First Amendment to the Constitution, the right of free speech, the Supreme Court upheld their constitutionality, claiming that there was a clear and present danger to free speech and to free press during a war. The result was that citizens were harassed purely upon suspicion. Walter Matthey was jailed for the high crime of attending an anti-war meeting and contributing a quarter to the cause. Under the act, the post office could censor the mail and over 400 periodicals were banned for a time, including the Saturday Evening Post and the New York Times. Robert Goldstein ran afoul of the law with his film, The Spirit of 76. It was just a silent movie about the Revolutionary War, and of course, the British war portrayed as America's enemy. Now, however, America and Great Britain were allies, and Goldstein was told to remove scenes of British soldiers shooting colonists. He refused and was sentenced to 10 years in a federal penitentiary. Goldstein served three years and his career never recovered. But the worst treatment under the Espionage and Sedition Acts was reserved for socialists and labor leaders. The founder of the Socialist Party and frequent presidential candidate Eugene V. Debs was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment on each of three counts to be served concurrently for his outspoken opposition to the war. I have been accused of obstructing the war, I admit it. Gentlemen, I abhor war. Undaunted, Debs ran for president from his jail cell in the Atlanta prison in 1920 and got almost a million votes. In 1921, President Warren Harding commuted his sentence. Emma Goldman, an anarchist, a person who believes there should be no government, was fined $10,000 and given two years in jail for denouncing the draft. On her release, she was promptly deported to Russia. Labor organizer Big Bill Haywood was convicted of sabotaging the war effort because he encouraged workers to strike for fair pay and decent working conditions. Haywood received a sentence of 20 years for his troubles, but jumped bail and fled to Russia, where he remained until his death 10 years later. On President Wilson's last day in office, Congress repealed the Sedition Act. 
Ironically, while American soldiers fought for freedom in Europe, freedom of speech and civil liberties were being denied to Americans at home. 